Hey guys, so it's me, Nicolette Mashile, and today we're doing another episode of My First Time. As you guys can see, I've invaded Ayanda's house. She's quickly doing something in the background, but we're going to be talking to her a little bit later on today. I mean, some of you might know her. She is that girl on Twitter. Official Yaya on fire. But for outside of Twitter and the things that she tweets, Ayanda is a content producer. She's also a television producer. So she curates content. She is the queen of culture. You know, creating culture, speaking about very, very salient conversations and topics that are really important in South Africa. And sometimes she does probe those hard questions and ask some really, really difficult questions for people to understand. But um, I get it. I'm her friend, so it's okay. Yeah, so <laughs> we are going to be talking to Yaya on fire about her first time with money and get to learn some of the things that she has learned over the years from her dad specifically. Let's go and hear what she had to say. So Ayanda, tell us about the first time you got a huge sum of money. Okay, cool. So, um, so my mom passed away when I was little, right? And she was married to this other horrible man um, who really kept me from everything. Ne? But Imali, I don't know, but <laughs> that money is really worth um, like institutions. So that's the one thing he couldn't control, right? So um, they found me when I was 21, and then they told me that they've been looking for me for all these years, but I guess 21 is the age where they actually uh, release the finances. So they called me, they said, I end up coming through. I mean, in my mind, ne, the secret, because I was, I was in a depression kind of thing, you know, where my dad and I were really fighting about my career. He still insisted that I study law, and I was like, but I'm not, I'm an artist, you know? Um, and my dad does this thing where if you don't, we, we are piggies, or you don't do things the way he wants, he kind of gets out of your life, he doesn't support you. But he doesn't leave, he's just like, fine, find your own way, do it. So I was so used to finding my own way and doing it, by that time that when that money came through, I was reading the secrets, I was summoning men, you know, summoning circles, Yonki into Benyenza, hey, Oprah, if she says the power of the mind and the tongue, I was like, fine girl, I'm gonna channel it all, aligning all my chakras, and then they called me and I was like, boom, Mushilu Oprah, why see, if you say your money's in the world, your money's going to come to you. It is there, not that I'm poor, it's just that right now I don't have the money in my hands, it's there, you know. So they called me, I went, they gave me my guys, they gave me everything. My dad was wondering, what so no my bank account when I was like, ah, So I got that money and then um, I was like, boom, now I'm gonna make my dreams come true. So I studied music, right? And then I went and did a music demo. So I bought, paid for studio time and all of that. Um, I went to Soweto TV and I said, listen, I can write and I see y'all, you know, you need me. So please give me a chance. And then I forced them basically to hire me. So they were like, plus we don't pay interns. So whatever. <laughs> so I was like, fine. So I was like, I was like, I was like, so I was like, I was like, I was like, I was like, um, then I was taking myself to so for like a whole year I was paying for myself with Nyam Seven Zini affording all of those things. And then Imali my Pella. Then I was like, so it's a TV take me seriously. Okay? Somebody needs to start paying somebody. And I know it's you. You that somebody. So yeah, that was my first big amount. And I think I did like really responsible things, but I developed like I'm a taste a nice man. I was getting Mali. You know, there wouldn't be a month where I wouldn't be buying all the magazines. Like Cosmo Glamour, um, that teen, what was that teen one? I don't know, but like at a time. Which one? 17. 17, yes. <laughs> there wouldn't be a time where I didn't have five magazines at a time. Wow. But it helped me though, because that's where I, I learned about, you know, critical thinking, uh, concepts, you know, I was producing a, a women's talk show a young girls talk show and all those things really plugged into uh, the things I was trying to teach women in Soweto. So I, oh, and I would go, everyone 
as na stress so me much she's 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 girl my dad still doesn't know that i had that money but um yeah my pela then i now because be saying as a kimali so it's tv be bangi pimali so i had to restructure my life being as i am rose for um you know new gods no more i was going to clicks and it pela you must know Guti, I was fetching the one that I like in Mel in Melrose. So when I didn't have money anymore, I had to go to Clicks and be like, okay, cool. What do you guys have? Ah, oh. Wow, what uncultured <laughs> new girl. What is this? <laughs> so yeah. Okay, well, rough, but at least I did some things. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad that you've got things that you can literally tangibly point at and say, This is what I did, this is what I did. And I like the fact that you talk about how you had to when the money finished, you had to like kind of restructure yeah. your life, you know, so that it can it can actually fit in mm. into the next budget. But we, you and I have had conversations. Tell us a little bit about Triple M. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Triple M, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you once had a lot of money with Triple M. Woo. So then my dad, hey, yes, mom, yes. But don't tell him. Yeah. Um, so my dad, my dad is one of those people. He knows the investments man, and even the ones I let. Yeah. So um, he jumped onto Triple M when Triple M still had money, and he does that a lot. And it's not just like I'm a pyramid scheme. He does that also with like good investments and stuff. Because when government was like, I'm a taxi, maweze, si invest in you. He took all his taxis. What's it, Bamban? and he got shares area by you know so he's always the first to jump on things what's all i need is ikamalako nesbongo nepenka county yako kariteri minanyege then okay that's cool then we can talk so he was getting um <clears throat> so he got like ama hey guys hey triple mg you have an email he was getting like 180k and sometimes we can get an 80k accounting yam milling you move this much money yeah yeah i'm a vibes yeah so we developed uh there was a year when um i was at home and he was just giving me 15k like every month so he would take the rest and then he'd give me 15k what a year wow big <laughs> and what did you do with that money okay i won't lie that money i drank it i promise you I, Yavana, of all the money I've had in my life, in my little M that I am not sure with me in in. Like where did it go? I can't remember. I just know I was going to my friends' houses a lot. I was buying amakota a lot. And I was buying alcohol a lot. And also I had um, I had a car at that time. So there was also a whole lot of petrol and a whole lot of fixing emoto and all of that stuff. But I, I can't say for sure with EAP in my letter. Is it because it was it felt like free money? Yeah. And you didn't know when it was going to end. I think so. so and you, every month you thought I is okay. Yeah, yes, yes. It felt like a oh, well, you know, like mm. it, it was going to be there forever. And another thing is that I didn't plan for it. So you see, the money that my mom left me, even though I didn't know it was going to come, but I had planned for it. Yeah. Like, I was reading all those books. I was writing down my goals, my dreams, and all of that stuff, right? So I knew... So you were channeling that money. Yes. So I knew, Guti, when it came through, what I was going to do with it, right? But later, when I I had just quit a job. <laughs> I had just quit a job, because that's what I did. Um, and for me i was just like you know what i'm so tired i'm so tired i'm stressed it's whatever screw this and then my dad came through and so i had I, I already had achieved some of my dreams at that time so i didn't have new dreams and i didn't have a, a different type of future that i thought of for myself you know and i didn't know Uti, there's life after five years or whatever <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so for me everything was immediate it was right now i'm in this situation so when he gave me that money i was like oh thanks appreciate it i don't know then i was just spending it as it came you know because it also did feel like it's forever i am not used to the investment life and the whole pyramid scheme thing <laughs> so obama knew which it would come to an end i didn't i just felt like i'm a forever cheese girl so I was all over the place. I was spending. I was, I looked really nice. I was dressing well and stuff. So yeah, that that sucks. 
I wish there are things that, and you know what, it's not the only time. I feel like right now I'm being punished for all the bad decisions that I made because right now I'm in the right brain to receive a whole lot of free money and all of that stuff, but I'm not. I literally have to work for everything and it's You're so stressful. Bags, no, I'm not securing the bags. I need to be securing because after that, then um, Quantro came through. And Quantro was paying me money that, for at that age, I, I didn't, it, I didn't need to be getting that much money for at Quantro, right? But um, now your Imalia corner, it, it kind of came in and went. It just set me up for some things in life, but yeah. Okay, so you <clears throat> speak a lot about your dad. <clears throat> What is the one lesson that your dad, you, he might not have necessarily taught you directly, but you can say, I have an, my dad about money. I, this thing he knows very well. I can tell you this much. My dad is not a reckless spender. Yeah. No. Um, people see him, right now, he drives a polo. Ne? Mm. But before he, and in Nakona, oh, before he had five cars, uh, King Navara, he had the um, M3, he had that long Merc, he had an, a van for everyday thingy, and then he had another small car, ne? oh, it got five. Um, none of those cars were an installment type of thing. And Nakon, it's not that he saved for it, it's just that he always knows a good deal. He always searches, he thinks about the purchases he's gonna make. He has told me before, Guti, I actually, I'm tired of this car. But we have had that conversation for a good two years. <clears throat> Highway. We have had that conversation for a good two years. Can I switch on here? Because there's, oh. For a good two years, and he was still driving the same car that he says he's tired of. Whereas, Mina, if I feel like I'm tired of something, I'm just like, I'm tired. I quit. Fuck it. And then I get the new version of it, right? But my dad plans. He plans every purchase so much that I feel like he shouldn't be planning I'm a purchase one like I'll be like dad I see you've got new sneakers you need to take me sneaker shopping as well you can't have new shoes and I don't have new shoes let's go and he'd be like and 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 then he'd be like okay as in I said again and then cause konamanje leale I've planned uguti and then then sizo kuluminda by yama sneaker he is hoping I forget, but because I don't forget, then when the time comes, I'm like, Daddy, you promised me sneakers. And then we do the whole thing. But he plans, he appears to be stingy because we are Ibala, Imali, I can, I'm a cousin, Mama, always like, Yo, Malume, nye, 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 nye. He, like, he, he would, at Nzokule, M17, he'll come through, bring me money to go to the doctor, and then I don't say, 100 rand guyo, because. You don't deserve the whole 500. <laughs> he, can't, he doesn't believe. He must always keep some for himself. So I should actually um, imitate that behavior. I think now I will. I just need the bags to come. So what's the one money lesson <clears throat> that you would like to teach your younger self? To teach my younger self? Actually, no. Who cares about your younger self? That's over. Yeah. What's the one one uh, money mantra that you want to carry to the rest of your life um yeah I, I i do want to have a plan even if like right now have a plan for uh, what i'm practicing to do is okay if not this much this is what i want to do if not this much this is what i want to do if i have that much so so that if i structure goals and i'm like okay this one can achieve me E50, let's say. Ne? I need to right now have a plan. You're going to, okay, in this year, this is the 50,000 that I'm going to receive. This is what I want to do with it. And can it generate me money? Because what I never did before was use my money to generate more money. I always used my money on stuff. And that never brought in more money. So I could have been really far if I had already thought of generating. Because for me, um, income was only from people giving you and that would be either your parents or your job it was never money that just sleeps like it like, it just comes so it was never passive income it was never i could have started this puzzle shop because they were caught you know 
long se kasi nga internet i could have bought a stock nyana na the first 15k that he gave me and then nga zibuto okay umantu say saying no mtabeng they can run this while i you know and then that can generate its own money so now i'm in that space where i know it's okay cool now i just want money that makes more money and i would like to plan and i i i really don't spend recklessly anymore like i think three times when i get an invitation i'm most of the time i go to nicolette's house because i know we're indoors i we're indoors we're chilling and so then it's not like we're gonna go clubbing and let me tell you they do trick us into going clubbing ne? but it's not all the time that <laughs> i'm able to go and that i do go so mm. okay the last thing that we're going to ask you is your big woo, your biggest financial mistake one that even now you sit and you're like Ish. my biggest financial mistake was um yeah not a man. Taking no zero. Yeah, <laughs> never. Um, taking money that I had actually made, and then thinking I can be my dad and getting into pyramid schemes. <laughs> you also went into pyramid schemes. I tried schemes. a new one. Yeah, have money. I was like, <laughs> and then Ben said that thing. You go to no. You gotta, you know, take big risks in order to wow. Wow. I think what I got from it was 400 rand. Yo, how much did you put? You don't want to know. Tell us, how much did you put? 10k. 10k! Because my dad put in my 10k. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> I think on that note, we will close it off. Bye. Bye.